Okay, let's go over the chapter seven test. Okay, first of all, number one, I think would be easiest to do by partial fractions. You might be able to do it by parts. You might be able to do it by substitution. I'll try some of those and see what happens, but partial fractions, since this denominator factors to x minus three times x minus three, we'd have 2x minus 1 over x minus 3 squared dx, the integral of that. When you have a factor, a degree 1 factor, a linear factor, you put just a simple a over it. No x's, no ax plus b, no anything else over it the factor, plus you have to do, when they repeat, you put 1, x minus 3, you do it squared, not just a b over it, you do it over it squared. When they repeat, you always put the squared. If it repeats twice, then you put, you know, if you have it more than just two, three times down there, then you'd have another one with it to the third. And you just put a B. Now, some of you made this extremely complicated because you said, to get a common denominator, I have to multiply this one by that denominator and this one by that one, but no. This is just X minus three and X minus three. You have one X minus three already down here. All you need to do is multiply this by X minus three once. And this by nothing, it's just the constant. So when you go to the x's, there's two x's, has to equal ax, ax's and no other. So a has to be two. And the constants, we have minus one equals this would be negative 3a plus b is a constant. So if a is 2, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 plus b would equal negative 1. So if you add 6, you get b equals 5. So this integral becomes the integral of a 2 over x minus 3 dx plus b 5 over x minus 3 squared dx. And then to finish that, the 2 comes out and we'd have 1 over if you need to, you can let u equal x minus 3. And this would be look like 2 integral of 1 over u, and du would equal dx. So this is just going to be ln of u, but ln of u, u is x minus 3. And this, if you let u be that, then you have um, 5 integral of uh, 1 over u squared du. So that's like u to the minus 2. So you raise it by 1, it'd be u to the minus 1, divided by minus 1. So it's minus 5 over u. And u is x minus 3. u to the minus 1 over minus 1 is just minus, minus 1 over u plus c. Now, you possibly, yeah, let's see. What if we just did u substitution, if we thought of this as the integral of x minus 3 squared 
and a 2x minus 1 dx. Uh, if we let u equals the x minus 3, du would equal dx. And if we went with just that substitution, it would be the integral. So this would be just substitution, u squared. And up here we'd have 2 times x. x would be u plus 3 minus 1. And dx is du. So then we'd have the integral of 2u uh, plus 6 minus 1 is uh, plus 5 over u squared du, which would equal um, the integral of 2u over u squared, which would be just 2 over u plus 5 over u squared du, which is basically what we had right here, and that would give you this answer. So you could do this in with substitution, but uh, integration by uh, parts. Some people tried this by parts. So if we do parts on this, so looking back at the original here, if we let u be the numerator, then du would be 2, two dx, and v would have to be this 1 over x minus 3 squared. So, and it has to be in the denominator, so to integrate that, uh, that's like 1 over u squared, which would be if you integrate it, that's like 1 over, it's like integrating 1 u to the minus 2, so it'd be minus 1 over x minus 3, 3. Now, those that tried to do it by parts didn't do very well at getting that set up. So then it would be uv, so uh, forget this, 2x minus 1 times a negative um, 1 over x minus 3 uh, minus the integral of 2 uh, times minus uh, x minus 3 dx and uh, and then if we integrate this, we get, would we'll have minus 2x minus 1 over x minus 3 plus, uh, the integral of this would be 2ln of x minus 3 plus c. So we've got this part matches. Now we have to get see how this would match up with this part. Well, you know, to show that this is the same, uh, we would have to show that this can be somehow changed here. If you do long division on this, you divide x minus 3 into minus 2x plus 1 x would go into minus 2x minus 2. So minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. Uh, draw the line and change the sign so I can add, and I get minus 5 as my remainder. So I'd write minus 5 over x minus 3. So this would be minus 2 
minus 5 over x minus 3 plus 2 ln x minus 3 plus c. So we have the, this part matches, this part matches, and the 2 is just can be combined with the constant. So a constant's a little different, but it's the same function that parts that have x's are the same. So this one could be done by parts, by partial fractions, and by substitution. You got a lot of flexibility. But there's none other that do partial fractions very well in this whole thing. So I would have not done parts or uh, substitution on this one. I would have stayed with the partial fractions on it because the other ones, yeah, none of the other ones are set up for partial fractions. All right, so I did one three different ways. Now, yes, this one, several people said, well, substitution's the easiest to do this. Yes, if you let u equal ln x, then du equals 1 over x dx and multiplying x both sides, x du would equal dx, and this would become the integral of u to the fourth uh, over x, and the dx would become x du. The x's cancel. The integral of u to the fourth is u to the fifth over 5 plus c, and u is ln x to the fifth over 5 plus c. All right. Could we have done this with parts? And several people said, okay, if I'm not going to do a uh, substitution for, for this one or that one, actually substitution works best for the last one, could I do this one by parts? If you don't do this one by parts, and none of these other ones work very well by parts, maybe four, maybe five, could we do this one by parts? And several of you tried to do this by parts and you got all fouled up. So let's look at how this would be done with parts. First of all, you gotta start off with u and v, u and dv multiplying to be this. So u, if we let it be ln of x to the fourth, and that would be times 1 over x dx, then these two would multiply to be this. And we integrate this, and the integral of 1 over x is ln x. Some of you took the derivative of 1 over x and got ln x, but it's the integral of 1 over x is ln x. The derivative of this, many of you who tried this could not do this derivative. You got something to the fourth. So the power comes down four times the something to the third times the derivative of the inside, derivative of ln and x is 1 over x times dx. So, the uv would be this times this, so that's ln, so this original integral, integral from, of ln of x to the fourth over x <coughs> would be u, ln of x to the fourth times ln x would be ln of x to the fifth minus the integral of v du. Well, there's a four in these two. And we got ln of x to the third times ln x. That'd be ln of x to the fourth times 1 over x dx. If you look closely at what we started with, at what we just got, 
it's one of those where we've circled. We've created itself back again. So what do we do? Well, let's just add. We've got minus four of these. Over here is one of these. So let's add five of these to both sides, uh, four of these to both sides. And then I end up with five integral of ln of x to the fourth over x dx is equal to ln of x to the fifth. And then if we divide by five, both sides, we have what we're supposed to be finding is equal to this, which is what we had here. And we've got our answer by parts. Fairly simple if you can keep your derivatives straight. Okay. How else did somebody try doing this? Let's see. Um, substitution parts. I don't remember any other particular method that was used on this. No trig substitution, no table formulas, no partial fractions. Okay, so I think that's the two methods. This uh, substitution by far the easiest, but we have to do integration by parts sometime. Could have done it here. Could have done it here. Let's go to this page. This one does not work very well with parts. This one really looks like a trig substitution where we want a triangle that we have a side that's 16 minus x squared. And when it's minus like this, they said let x equal a, which is the square root of that, for sine theta. Theta. Sine is x over 4, opposite over hypotenuse. This side would become the hypotenuse squared minus the opposite squared. So dx would be derivative of sine is cosine 4, cosine theta, d theta. And this square root thing would be the adjacent, adjacent to the hypotenuse, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is the cosine of the angle. So I multiply by the 4. And so now I know that I can change this, changing to theta, so my limits are different. Some, something new. Now, I can find them, but I'm not going to. I have this square root thing, which is 4 cos and theta. And then the dx, which is 4 cos and theta, d theta. Many of you got to there. The tried trig substitution on here. 4 times 4 is a 16. A lot of you took that out. Cosine squared theta d theta. And then at that point, I expected you to just look up the on the formula page for cosine squared. And I gave you one possibility here, and I put up the one that was of the two that were in the book that's probably the easiest. Now, these are x's and these are theta, so all these x's need to be theta, so this becomes 16, a parenthesis, theta over 2 plus 1 half sine of theta, cosine theta, and it says plus c, but we have limits. But we, that would be in terms of theta. So now we want to change this not in terms of theta. So let's go back to x's. So we have 16, uh, parenthesis, theta. Theta would be 
the let's see we divide by 4 x divided by 4 and take the sine inverse sine inverse of x divided by 4 over 2 plus one half the sine of theta is x over 4. The cosine of theta is square root of 16 minus x squared over 4. Evaluated, now we're back in x's, so from 0 to 2. So we have 16 sine inverse of 1 half over 2 plus uh, 1 half times 2 over 4, which is 1 half times 2 squared is 4. From 4 from 16 is square root of 12 over 4. That's with the twos in, minus sine inverse of zero divided by four is zero over two plus one half times zero over four times the square root of 16 over four. So this is zero. And the angle where the sine is zero is zero to radians, so this is zero. All of this is zero. The angle where the sine is one half is pi over six divided by two. And this would be uh, square root of 12 over 16. And if I take 16 times this, 16 divided by 2 be 8. So I have 8 pi over 6, or 4 pi over 3, plus this times this, the 16's cancel, plus the square root of 12. Trig substitution worked best on that one. Now, you might have been able to do trig substitution on number five, but then I'm not sure what you would have done on this one. This one, you could do this one by substitution. You could say, yes, this is, since this is an odd power, you could go integral from zero to two of uh, sine to the fourth x sine x dx and let u be cosine x and du would be uh, negative sine x dx and this would change to uh, now we're changed to u so I'm going to forget my limits for a moment and sine of Sine to the 4, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared x times it again to bet it to the 4th. And sine of x and dx is du over negative sine x. These cancel, I get negative. Don't know the limits. Uh, we would have 1 minus u squared squared du, which would be minus the integral of 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth du, which would be the integral of minus, oh, which would be integrated, would be u minus 2u to the third over 3 plus u uh, u to the fifth over 5 
evaluated but to something to something changing back to the x's it'd be minus cosine of x minus 2 cosine cubed x over 3 plus cosine to the fifth x over 5 evaluated from 0 to 2 so this would have been minus cosine of 2 minus 2 cosine cubed 2 over 3 plus cosine to the fifth of 2 over 5 minus a minus be plus and put in 0 and I get 1 plus cosine of 0 is 1 cubed is 1 two, minus uh, 2 thirds and plus 1 fifth and this comes out to be approximately 0.9 something but we could use a tables and there's a sine reduction formula the sine reduction formula now I gave it I forgot a minus when I wrote this in here I'll be honest so I accepted if you put put use this one and a lot of people did with the plus then I accepted the answer you would get it comes out not to be 0.9 but close to it so there should be a minus here so I'm gonna do this video with the minus on it uh, but using the reduction formula n n is 5 so we would get minus sine of n minus 1 4 x cosine x over n 5 now this needs to be evaluated from 0 to 2 a lot of people left that out plus 5 minus 1, 4 over 5, integral of sine to 2 less than 5, which is 3. And then some people went through some strange gyrations on this, did some weird things. You could go to a substitution and do this, which is fine. But we have a reduction formula. We can apply it to when the n is 3. So, this would be minus sine to the fourth x cosine x over 5, evaluated from 0 to 2, plus 4 fifths. Now, it would go from 3 to 3 minus 1, 2 sine squared x cosine x over 3 plus oh and it's minus on that get that minus again 3 minus 1 is 2 over 3 the integral of uh, 3 minus 2 is just 1 sine of x dx and oh this has to be evaluated from 0 to 2 and this is from 0 to 2 so then we get um, all of this the integral the, of sine is negative cosine so we're gonna have negative sine of, to the fourth of x cosine x over 5 Evaluate from 0 to 2 plus 4 fifths of this is evaluated, and that would be now minus uh, sine squared x cosine x over 3. But this will also have, uh, let's see, we got 4 fifths times 2 thirds, that's 8 fifteenths.
And the integral of sine is negative cosine of x. And all of this now, this one, this one, and this one are all evaluated from 0 to 2. And if you plug 2 in for all the x's, work that out, you'll get um, something. And then you put 0 in for all the x's. And where there's a sign, that would be 0. So you only get this. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So you get minus 8 fifteenths on the 0. And it'll come out to be, now with the correct signs in here, it'll come out to be the 0.9. Now the ones that, when you, with that, incorrect sign on there that I had it comes out to be 0.7 and you got full credit for the 0.7 even though it wasn't correct because of my mistake okay so I would have done a, a trig table on this one because I could this works fine but then we would use substitution as the main thing more than once and wouldn't have a tables place now this one <coughs> <clears throat> here's where I would use substitution as the main stay because we'd have u equal the x squared plus 9 and du would be 2x dx. So this would become the integral of x du over 2x and this would be u. And the x's cancel, and we get 1 half integral of 1 over u du. So it'd be 1 half ln of u plus c. That one's really quite simple with that. Now, some of you tried to do this one by parts. Let's see if I can do this one by parts. I think it gets a little bit tricky. <clears throat> and I'll show you why. If I try to do this by parts, if I let u be the x, then I have to let the dv be 1 over 9 plus x squared, not just 9 plus x squared. To integrate that is... Uh, it comes out to be, this is the uh, tangent inverse of x over 3. And let's see, I don't, and we'd have to use a u substitution. We'd have to use a trig substitution to figure this out. And this would be <coughs> dx. Those of you who tried this didn't get that. Let's see. <clears throat> to check that out, um, the trig substitution for having uh, this would be 3 tangent x uh, theta would be x. Uh, dx would be 3 secant squared theta d theta. And this would be if I make the triangle, I'll do it here. If I make tangent to be x over 3, this side becomes square root of 9 plus x squared. And so the secant of theta times 3 is the square root of 9 plus x squared. So, what we would have, if we were doing this by parts, we'd have uv, which would be x tangent inverse of, uh, oh, wait a minute, I need to finish this, the integral of this. I need to do the integral of 1 over x9 plus x squared dx. With this u substitution, this would be the integral of... Um, 9 plus x squared is the secant squared. So this would be 3 squared secant squared. Oop, this is in the bottom. 3 squared 
secant squared is this, that squared. And that would be in the denominator. And in the numerator, I have 3 secant um, theta d theta. And so this would become 1 third. That's what I thought. There's a 1 third here. Um, the integral, uh, the secant would cancel one of these secants. There'd be just a 3 left here. And secant is 1 over cosine. So this would be the cosine d theta. Integral of cosine theta, it'd be um, sine theta. One third sine theta plus c. Did I do something wrong here? Bum, bum, bum. Theta. I thought it was b. Sine. So, oh yeah, no, this should be tangent, inverse tangent. <laughs> X is the, um, that, dx is 3 secant squared theta, oh, secant squared theta up here. Uh, 3 secant squared theta, d theta, so the secant squareds cancel. So there's no, that's just d theta with a one-third. And so this would be theta, one-third theta. And theta would be the tangent inverse of x over 3. One-third tangent inverse of x over 3. So I have to go through all of that to come up with this if I'm going to do it by parts. And then I still got more to do. Because then I would have to do uv, so x times all of that, one-third x tangent inverse of x over 3 minus the integral of v, one-third tangent inverse of x over 3 dx. And the integral of tangent inverse, according to all our formulas, the integral of tangent inverse, um, the integral of this is tangent inverse, but the integral of tangent inverse, we don't have it on any of our tables. We'd have to go to special. So I'm going to run into a, oh, wait a minute, here we go. Integral of tangent, no, that's a derivative. We don't have the integral of tangent inverse. We'd have to have a tangent inverse in one of these spots to do it here. And we don't have tangent inverse here. So then we get into a bind. So parts doesn't work here very well. Very messy. It might be possible if we had the formula for that. But we don't. Substitution was the simplest way to do this one. Okay. Now here, form is important. So, I wanted to see you write the limit. The problem here is going to infinity, so we write a going to infinity of the integral from 1 to a of x dx over x squared plus 1 squared. And I made this one so that u substitution works pretty well if you let u equal x squared plus 1 du equals 2x dx dx equals du over 2x. And this would become the limit as a approaches infinity 
of now we're going to have new limits so we're going to leave those out for a sec and x d uh, u would be d uh, dx is du over 2x and down here we have u squared which becomes the limit as a approaches infinity of the x's cancel we get a half and the integral of u to the minus 2 is minus so we got the half uh, u to the minus 1 evaluated from something to something when we go back to x would be minus 1 over 2 times x uh, u, which is x squared plus 1. Evaluated, now we're back into the right variable, 1 to a. So this would become the limit as a approaches infinity. Uh, put a in here, and we have minus 1 over 2 times a squared plus 1. Minus a minus is plus 1 over 2 times 1 squared plus 1. And when a goes to infinity, this would get really large. And this is doubly really large. And so a denominator really large makes this whole fraction go to 0. And we get 1 squared plus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. We get one fourth. So that one converges. So does this one diverge? Let's find out. So cosine of zero is one. That doesn't cause division by zero, so that's okay. But pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero. 0 squared is 0. This causes problems. So we have to write the limit as a approaches pi over 2 of the integral from 0 to a. And this is cosine squared. We could just write that as secant squared theta d theta. <coughs> Excuse me. And the integral of secant squared is um, tangent. So we have the limit as a approaches pi over 2 of the tangent of theta evaluated from 0 to a, which is the limit of a as a approaches pi over 2 of tangent a minus tangent zero. Well, tangent of zero is zero, and tangent of a, as a goes to pi over two, as you get closer and closer to pi over two, if you remember on a unit circle, the tangents, the y value in here, and for pi over two, the tangent goes off to infinity. So this diverges. <coughs>